Good afternoon everyone, my name is Benjamin and welcome back to another video. As you can tell by what is on the screen, um, yeah, we're talking about that. Um, geez, my hair really is curling. Huh. Anyway, uh, thank you phone. Thank you for interrupting. Anyway, um, yeah, so yesterday someone tried to assassinate Trump. Um, clearly unsuccessfully, um, I, I'm still kind of trying to, things, the world has gone completely insane, it is, I, it, what else can I say? Um, <laughs> and this is like right before the Republican convention too. Um, so, yeah, uh, and watching the clip and then looking at some of the things I've read about it, um, if Trump hadn't turned at the exact moment he did, we would be talking about a much different headline and talking about a much, much different, uh, what happens now, because, what happens now, in real life, in our timeline, is things go on as normal and maybe you see a little bit more fervent turnout in favor of Donald Trump. Um, I'm not going to try and guess what's going to happen with polls, because um, I don't know. I'm not going to claim to know. We'll see what happens. Um... But I was going to be talking about the convention bump effect today until, well, I saw this last night um, or heard about it. Um, what we do know about what happened was the shooter used an AR pattern rifle. Um, and was about 100 meters away. Which, honestly, that's roughly where I would have guessed. Um, I was wrong about the type of firearm. Um, I figured it was some idiot using a pistol, you know, because they could probably maybe sneak it into the event. I don't. But the person was outside of event grounds and was using a rifle, so I was wrong there. Anyway. But that's not interesting to talk about, at least not for me. Um, not because I'm not into the weapons thing or anything like that, or, you know, you can find out all the information you want to or need to about the actual shooting. What's interesting to me is the hypothetical of what if it wasn't a failed attempt. So the first things first, um, that throws the election into complete chaos. Um, especially because one of the major parties now has a completely vacant top of the ticket on the literal eve of their convention, and there's no heir apparent. So, you would have a brokered convention, and we still might get to see a brokered convention this year. The Democrats might, you know, try to kick... Biden off the ticket, but what would a brokered Republican convention look like, especially because no one would have time to campaign beforehand? Obviously, you would have Haley immediately say, hey, I ran in the primaries. I didn't even suck. I, you know, I took second place in the primaries. I, it should be me. So you would have Haley with a decent amount of support. She's already got a fair number of delegates um, pledged to her. Um, I could see DeSantis trying, but eh, his, he kind of fell off the face of the earth. Um, you would have the potential VP contenders like Rubio and Burgum, uh, J.D. Vance, all making cred credible bids. Um, Christy No might, might try, but she'd fail. Plus, Christy Noem is exactly the type of candidate you don't, you don't want to run 
at any level anymore. Her political career is dead. Because anyone who runs against her can basically use, well, quote her own book and say, yeah, you killed a puppy. My opponent kills puppies. She even admitted to killing puppies. Um, so, yeah, you, you don't know. <laughs> um, then... You're, you probably have some off-the-wall types, some dark horses, people who you don't really anticipate. I could see Larry Hogan saying, Hey, you know what? Senate's cool and all, but what if I was the president? You know, you would maybe have like a Chris Sununu, um, someone like that might try... Um, and although he might be waiting for 2024, or sorry, 2028, uh, Brian Kemp, I've heard his name being mentioned for 28. Um, you can maybe see Greg Abbott from Texas. Um, Ted Cruz almost certainly would try to get some traction. Um, But yeah, you you would see a lot of people immediately throw their hat into the ring. And how it all sorts out is, well, you'd have quite a number of floor votes because you're going to have to whittle down a bunch of people. And with everybody being unpledged at that point, um, except for maybe Haley's delegates on the first ballot, um, it would be a it would be fun to watch um and you would maybe have like South Carolina pledging for Nikki Haley every single time um kind of like in 1924 there were jokes of you know it became a common saying that uh somebody who was consistent about something was as steady as Alabama for Underwood because that was actually a contested convention, and Alabama was first, and they always said Alabama casts its delegates for Underwood. Um, so it became a, a saying that, you know, yeah, and that was on every single ballot, too. But, you know, the favorite sun effect doesn't really exist anymore. It kind of does, but it doesn't. Um, I'm not ex entirely positive how. A contested convention would turn out in the end who the nominee would be or anything like that, but it is interesting to speculate. Um, but what is this really realistically going to do in terms of what really happened? Um, well, if the Republicans were going to nominate someone other than Trump, um, that isn't going to happen now. <laughs> um, and that image that I've got up on screen, um, yeah, you want to talk about a, an image that you want people to think of when you think about you? Yeah, Donald Trump basically got his Christmas present in July. Um, because that is pure campaign fodder. Seriously. All you have to do is slap that image anywhere and say, this is the toughness that we need. Like, this is just pure campaign ad. And it's not photoshopped. It's not AI generated. This was a real picture. <laughs> anyway. Point is... I don't really know how the election is going to change, what's going to happen now. This is kind of, I'm going to say, uncharted territory to an extent. Anyway, take it easy, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed, and leave your thoughts down below. Thank you.